one. Hi, everyone. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to be live with the one and only Christy Runzer. Oh my gosh. Um, if you're not familiar with me, I'm Carly Myers. I'm the founder of APOP Studios or a piece of positivity studio. And what I do is I help people who feel stuck in their life and career use creativity to create forward movement in their life. Um, whether that's in your career, your relationships, beyond. Um, and I'm really, really excited because I know a lot of you guys filled out a poll that I put in my Facebook group, um, Adult Like a Pro. And your questions all surrounded, or your concerns for 2018, or your desires, your goals, all surrounded finances. Um, and so I brought you guys a special guest, Christy. I'm gonna like, like the applause should go. <laughs> Why don't you introduce yourself and tell everybody who you are? Yes. Hi, everyone. And thank you, Carly. I'm super excited to be here. Uh, I'm Christy Runzer. I'm the founder of OnRoute Financial, and I describe my business as a financial wellness company because uh, we offer a lot of different things. So we do money mindset work. We do financial planning and coaching and then also financial education and kind of the combination of how those three things are going to allow you to live a healthier and, and you know better financial life and and on your poll area two was self-care and mm -hmm. a lot about financial self-care so i'm super excited to be here tonight yeah i know on your instagram was it your instagram it says you're a self-care junkie yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah exactly. so you're in the right tribe right now yeah <laughs> so I, ha I kind of I want I wanted to invite you on here to talk about money mindset, how it, you know, impacts our wallets, how it impacts, you know, just about just about everything. I mean, it's kind of a domino effect um, in our lives. So I'm really, really excited. And um, I guess I just wanted to have you kind of take the reins on this and and maybe offer a tip or two, maybe a story that they can take. You know, the people who are watching this take with them and learn from and maybe implement in their lives. Yeah, for sure. So there's a lot with money mindset. Like this is a beast. So if you're on this journey, thinking about starting this journey, first thing I'll say off the bat is like, be kind to yourself, right? Like you're not going to transform necessarily into a super positive and abundant minded person overnight. So definitely realize that it's a journey that takes time and be kind to yourself. And I know this from experience. So I probably started my money mindset journey about a year and a half ago. And I've been a financial planner for five years. So I was a financial planner who knew all of the skills and tools to, you know, create a, a financial plan, save for the future, build wealth. But I still wasn't, you know, hitting that, hitting my definition of success at financially because the burdens that were going on in my mind, my self-talk, my negative money mindset was really, really holding me back. So I think this is almost the foundation of building wealth and financial stability and living more abundantly it is really getting your mind um, towards the right path in a way that is serving you as opposed to holding you back. Because for me, I was I was holding myself back. The money stories and, and mindsets and self-talk that I had was self-sabotaging. Um, and, and for me, it was showing up in the form of associating my money with my worth. So my net worth and my self-worth were one and the same. Basically, if I wasn't hitting my financial goals in my business, I wasn't making you know enough money, enough sales, having enough. That's a big thing with uh, kind of that lack mindset, right? Yeah. Um, and, and I really felt like a failure and I would question myself and I would doubt myself. And then I'd find myself like Netflixing and chilling during the middle of the week and, and all of the self-sabotage that, that comes from that. So I think um, recognizing is the first step. Like, do you see that in, in your work and with your clients that there's kind of like a moment where you have to almost recognize what you're doing, like stepping into awareness? Yeah, I think... Definitely. Awareness is like the number one thing. I'm getting a little bit of echo, I have to warn you. Okay. Um, I could put headphones in. Would that help? Yeah, that might, that might be helpful because I can definitely hear. But um, 
And I, I, if anybody's hearing an echo, let, let us know so that we, we want you to have a really good Facebook Live experience. Um, maybe like a little hands up or something. But so, yeah, the first step really is to recognize what, you know, what it is that's holding you back, like the mindset piece. Um, and sometimes that can be difficult to do, like to step out of yourself and like really be like, okay, what is the, what is the, you know, I have an empty wallet, but what's the real issue? Like that is, the wallet is the symptom, not the cause. Mm -hmm. um, and so how, maybe give us an example of how you would go from identifying like, okay, this is, so the empty wallet is the cause or is the symptom? What is the cause? How would you go through identifying the cause of all of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a lot of different things you can do. I would say start by just noticing and starting to pay attention. So if we're using the empty wallet example, maybe this is somebody who um, just spends when, when they have money and just never seems, no matter how much they make, to have enough. Um, and so I would start to pay attention to when you're in a state of emptying out the wallet, right? Whether you're at Target going crazy through all of the aisles or retail therapy. <laughs> yeah. Whatever that looks like for you, whatever empties your wallet, what is happening around that? What's going on in your mind? What's happening in your day? Are there events triggering you? Like a lot of people, have um, tendencies to spend when they're in some sort of emotional state. Um, and, and this comes out with like eating as well too, right? Like if you're the yeah. emotional eater, I know I've definitely been somebody who's done that and, and I've been an emotional spender. I think we've all done that at times, but just kind of paying attention to when that's happening. Like if you're feeling down on a day, a certain day or something bad happens, how do you respond? Or is that when you're going to empty out the wallet? So I would say just kind of start noticing and paying attention to kind of what's happening right now. Yeah. You know, I actually have a client right now who I have track her mood every day and I have her track her expenses in conjunction with her mood. Yes. So, and we found some serious correlations between mood yes. and spending, especially for her. It's in like the bookstore. She'll just like buy a ridiculous amount of books. Um, when she's feeling a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, and we could go even further deeper, like, okay, books, she's escaping, you know, she's like escaping the reality, going into something deeper, but it's also really affecting her wallet. And so we're really working on, on stuff like that. So what, so what would you, what would you say for someone who is kind of in that, you know, they know when they're, when they're an emotional spender, what should they do? Are, you know, should they be exploring other self-care, you know, avenues? Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot. And and I'll say there's no one right answer. It's going to depend per person, right? Everybody has to figure out what works for them. So if you're frustrated with this and you're trying to get better in certain areas and it's not working, stick with it. Keep experimenting. Keep trying. You will find that thing. So first off, there's no one right answer, but some exercises that you can do, some things that you can explore. So I love talking about money stories because they are super insightful into the beliefs and habits that we have today because we form our beliefs and habits based off events that happened in our lives, based off of observing society, hearing from our parents. So ask yourself, this is the exercise, what messages did you hear about money growing up? What did you observe your mom do, your dad do, your your family, society, friends? You know, did you how how did you kind of compare your family's wealth to others around you? And think about those messages, right? You know, there's the money doesn't grow on trees and rich people are greedy and yeah. I will only make money if I work hard or like, what were those things for you? And then you can kind of compare that message to habits that you've noticed today and start to fill that gap. Okay. This was a message I heard. This is how I act today. What belief did I form because of that message, that event? Because we, everything that we think, and this applies, you know, to self-talk 
on all topics. And, and you know this very well, because this, you know, I learned a lot of this from you, Carly, as somebody who's coached me, you know, these beliefs that we have are just things that might not necessarily be our own, right? These are things, beliefs and, and ideas and thoughts that we've formed because of influences outside of our control. So we have to identify what beliefs did we form? And hey, you know, did that actually, do I actually believe that? Or is yeah. that somebody else's belief? Yeah. And it's funny because a lot of, a lot of us will have these, you know, these underlying beliefs and, and we'll say like, Oh, I don't believe that. I don't believe that, but you're still acting as if you do. So like, you know, you're, you're moving on that. Uh, you're moving through life as if that belief is true. So when it boils down to it, it looks like you believe in it. So what is, what is, what are the action steps that you can do to reprogram that belief? Um, what would you, how would you say, like, how would you respond to that? Like, what should I do if I, for instance, my family, like we just talked about this earlier, like my family has always been, you know, debt is bad. Debt is bad. You know, uh, don't get yourself too deep or else you won't, you know, you're not going to be able to get yourself out of debt. And, you know, what would you say for someone who has form, you know, formulated a belief around money who wants to, you know, like consciously wants to move out of this belief and make, you know, um, take steps forward to, you know, disengage with it, but doesn't know exactly how to navigate that space. Yeah. And, you know, again, there's a lot of different things you can try. One thing that's worked for me personally is figuring out, okay, I have a belief that, you know, if I don't hit my financial goal, my business is failing. Um, whereas I would love to get to a point where, you know, I'm super successful no matter how much money I make belief, but going from A to Z is really hard. So mm -hmm. quick, especially. So I like to look at it in terms of, of a journey, right? Like I'm starting, I know where I'm starting. I know where I want to be. What's the next belief that I can form that will get me a little bit closer. So if it's, I'm a failure because I didn't hit my financial goal, maybe it's, you know, okay, I didn't hit my financial goal. That's okay, but I need to retweak a strategy or or, or kind of like, what can I believe in next? <laughs> what can I strive to really take in and and act on and believe in, in my heart truly next? And then once you kind of conquer that, you can kind of keep going. So it's like taking baby steps a little bit, if that makes any yeah. sense. Yeah, absolutely. And this really makes me think of something that I talk to with a lot, talk about with a lot of my clients, which are the should statements. Like I should, my career should be further by now and my business should be making more money. I should be happier in my job. You know, all of these shoulds and like shoulds are the depths of despair. Like that's just where they lead you. They're like the staircase to, ugh, like I don't even want to go there. <laughs> um, and really say like turning those shoulds into I would like tos. Yes. You know, right. So I would like to be further in my career right now. I would like to have more money in my business. So that empowers you to create, to take like bold action, to move in that direction rather than feeling defeated. Yes. Do you like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I agree a hundred percent. I think something also that you said, aside from the shoulds, which is so true and important is getting clear on what you want. So I hear this a lot. I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't want this. Okay. That's good. It's actually, it is good to know what you don't want, but to take that to the next step, what, what do you actually want? Mm -hmm. um, it is so important in the money mindset stuff. And, you know, just a couple of quick little like exercises, tools, journaling is amazing. Positive affirmations, right? Like taking the negative, you taught me this one, taking the negative belief and creating a positive affirmation from that belief. And what you actually had me do, Carly, was write down all of my negative beliefs and write down what that looks like in a positive light and repeat that to myself, you know, daily. And, and that's a super impactful exercise. Um, maybe you're somebody who is more extroverted and likes to talk things through as opposed to kind of going in, in your shell and, and journaling and, and stuff. So you can yeah. find a safe place, a buddy, you know, a professional, somebody that you can, can talk about it with, find that accountability with, and also just start to educate yourself. Um, read books, listen to podcasts, right? Like 
follow people on Instagram. Like, however, you can kind of start to make that topic a little bit less scary and, and more approachable to yourself uh, will help. Yeah. And you know, what's funny is you're talking about like the extrovert, the person who likes to like talk it out more. Um, when we talk about visualizing and figuring out what you want, that is something like as an extrovert, um, that's something that I would do. And I wouldn't go out into a room. I wouldn't go tell my, you know, my best friend or like, you know, do it in that way. I would actually just pull up, like, you know, pull up my phone and record myself, mm -hmm. um, like voice record myself talking, or I would do like a video thing where I would envision my life a year from now. It would really help me get clear on what I wanted. Who knew that I was pissed off that, my table was, I don't know, I'm just making something up. Like my table was three inches shorter than I wanted it. You're like, whatever. Um, or I had one really powerful one, which is like, I wanted, I wanted to grow my own strawberries. Like it was just like a comfort for me. Um, so like figuring out what you want, like you want an X, X amount of dollars in your bank account. You want to be able to, like, I have some clients who like want to be able to give money to like their parents to take, help them like release the financial burden, yes. you know, what is it that you want? And let's build backwards from there. Exactly. And that's really what financial planning is. And that's probably a lot of the work that you do as well is, is kind of starting with the end in mind and, and designing a life, a business that aligns with that. Um, and, and another point on kind of the, the why or what you do want to do one, just see what comes up for you. But then I would challenge you afterward to kind of ask yourself why again, especially if it's a financial goal. So if you set a goal that says, I want to make six figures in my business next year or in my job, or I want to whatever, save X amount of dollars for this thing. Well, why do you actually want to do that? Like, what is actually important about that thing? Because oftentimes financial goals could be things like, I want to buy a house but it's not about the house or the money, right? The the deeper meaning might be, I wanna have a safe and secure place to raise a family and, and grow all these memories. So going beyond the numbers and the goals that you're setting for yourself and figuring out what those truly mean to you. Like, I, I feel like every time I do this exercise, I discover something new. So it started when I was transitioning out of working with, pre-retirees. And I said, okay, I don't want to do this. I knew what I didn't want. I was like, I do want to work with young women, but why? I was like, I, I don't know, like the industry <laughs> underserves them and there's not a lot of education out there. And, and I would just kind of keep digging and keep digging and a lot. And then I found a really personal why about wanting, about my business goals, which was, I want to have a family. That's my top value. And I want to be a super present mom and be able to make a comfortable living and be there, you know, in my kids' lives. So what is that thing for you? What is that thing that really is driving you and getting you out of bed and motivated in the morning? And not being afraid to, you know, to, to say what you actually want. Cause I think like, that could easily be for someone that could make them feel like, Oh, I'm being selfish. Like if you want the Mercedes, like who effing cares? Like you can go for it. If that's really like deep down, if you want to be present for your family deep down like that, it doesn't matter what other people think. So like really be real with yourself. Don't, don't let society tell you what you want. Like you need to, you know, be real. Yes. Be real. I yeah. agreed a hundred percent. And a lot of your money messages will hold you back from saying what you really want. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like I want to, we just talked about this earlier. Like I, you know, I might want to sign up for a program, right. But my money story might be like, no, 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 no. If you have to go into debt to mm -hmm. sign up for this program, well then you're not, you should not do that. Right. And so like that conflicting story is going to impact a lot. So Yes, being super aware. But one thing before we get to kind of the end of this, you know, this experience, this Facebook Live experience, um, mm -hmm. I just want to talk a little bit about job resentment because I think that that's really coming up for a lot of people. I'm like 90% of the population. That number is arbitrary. But almost everyone I seem to talk to these days want to venture out, whether it's into a new career, whether it's starting their own business, um, whether it's, you know, creating passive income, et cetera, et cetera. There's this, there's this resentment that they're holding towards their job. And I think that there's something to be said for um, switching the mindset around that, 
that kind of money piece, uh, the job that they're in, et cetera. A hundred percent. I, I see that a lot as well. Just feeling stuck where you are, you know, you're not liking your situation, but either you stay for the money or for whatever reason. Um, and, and there's a lot that goes into it. First thing I'd say is like one kind of be curious about that resentment. What are you actually feeling? How are you, why are you resenting? What is it specifically that kind of doesn't align with you and your values? Um, but we talked about this a little bit earlier was the gratitude for Mm. that situation because that thing, the job can fund the passion, the side hustle, the business, whatever it is. And trying to look at it um, as a short-term thing, right? It's a, it's a period of time where you're doing what needs to be done in order to fund the dream. Um, yeah. if, if you're someone who has the goal of, you know, stepping out into your own business or, or even switching careers, mm-hmm. hey, this is the thing that's kind of short-term filling a need, um, but also being clear about where you want to go. So sometimes that resentment can be there because people just don't really know what they want and, but they know they don't like their current situation. Yeah. They don't Mm -hmm. know what they want. So get clear on that. Be curious about what you're resenting. Try to be, you know, grateful and, and realize that this is providing value to you in a way, maybe not the way you ideally want your career to provide value for you and but that's okay you can you can get there um and i would say also just like coming to the the realization or 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 building that confidence that you can get the situation you want if you do want to change your situation that can happen it's it's possible and yeah. Sometimes that's hard to believe. I was stuck in that place for a while of not believing that I could actually change my situation. And you have. So like maybe, maybe we have you on here. Maybe the universe is having you on here for all of the people who want to leave their jobs and want to start their own business. I mean, businesses, you're a success story in that way. So, you know, what if, you know, was that, okay, I figured out what I wanted. I took bold action and I renewed my passion and motivation. And then I continue to take bold action. And you continue that process until, oh my, oh my gosh, one day I woke up and it was a reality. Yeah. And it's still a work in progress to be honest, but it was getting clear. First was just realizing that I wasn't happy and that I didn't want what I currently had, Um, which I had by, you know, outsider standards built a pretty successful financial planning practice. I had, you know, 30 some clients. I had a healthy five figure income. Um, but I wasn't happy and I wasn't really getting out there and looking for new business because I wasn't passionate about who I was serving and, and how I was helping them, even though I was passionate about financial planning. So it was like the first change was, okay, well, who do I want to serve now? And if you're in a job, this might be different, right? Um, it might be like, okay, this is my role now, but like, what would I want my role to look like? Or yeah. if it's your side hustling and you're looking to maybe jump in full time, like this is what's happening now. Okay, what do I want this to look like? So starting to put those pieces together, figuring out what I do want, checking it against my deeper why of wanting to be a present mom. So, you know, is this model going to allow me time flexibility, for example? You know, is this model going to allow me um, to make a healthy living to support my family? Um, And then, yeah, so it's getting clear on what you want, having the vision, focusing on one thing at a time. (laughs) Micro bravery. Yeah, (laughs) that's really hard. And then just keep showing up, keep working, keep growing. Don't be afraid to invest in yourself. We talked about this earlier, how you spent, you know, probably what might have been an uncomfortable amount of money on a coaching program. Yet that has come back to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So don't be afraid to invest in yourself. If you haven't read You're a Badass at Making Money by Jen Sincero. Sincero. I don't know how to pronounce her last name. Sincero, yeah. That is an amazing place to get started with your money mindset. Dig in there. (laughs) Dig in there first. Yeah. And so, Christy, I, I told everyone that we had a surprise for them. I mean, you were the first surprise, but there's another surprise that we wanted to kind of reveal for them as kind of a perk for being a follower of mine and part of the Facebook group. So I'm just going to, I'm going to let you reveal 
Yes. For all of you amazing people listening, if you're feeling stuck about money, whether it's your relationship with money or you are wanting to take action, but not too sure where to start, or maybe you just want to learn something. There's so much information out there and you're not sure exactly what's applicable to you. I would love to offer you a free 60 minute coaching session And we can talk about whatever you want, come with a specific problem or just show up and I can kind of guide you and and talk you through it. But I'll leave you with an action plan that you can use over three months and it'll just kind of give you that jumpstart that you need to really begin this journey because it is a journey and it's not kind of a one and done, but starting to build the tools, um, I think we can can get a a good amount accomplished in a, a 60 minute call. So I'll drop a calendar link in the comments and I would love to meet with all of you. Go ahead and jump in that calendar link and schedule some time. Yes. So I'm so excited about this guys because Christy is the real deal. Like she, like she was saying, she's been a financial planner. She's, you know, taken, you're talking about people who have done it. Like she says she's a work in progress. She's being humble. She has really, you know, figured figured out a way to help get that mindset out of the way for all of her clients. She's talking about 30 plus more clients that she's worked with. She's a big deal. So grab a spot on her calendar. And if you are around um, at, in about two and a half weeks, I am doing a live talk in New Jersey called how do you, you know, a simple process for how to use creativity to get unstuck in your job, something along those lines. I'm still working on the name, but um, if you're stuck in your career, stuck in your job, you want to move forward, uh, find the link. I'll comment that too. And we hope to talk to you guys soon. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, and thank you, Christy, so much for coming, for sharing your expertise and um, just just being here, being present with us. Yes, you're so welcome. Thank you. All right. See you guys later. Bye.